So any questions before we take a little break and then we'll do our build our machines and set them all up? What do those keys look like? Pardon? What do you refer to keys a lot? What do they look like? Sure. Um, a, uh, I'm going to go into it. Yeah, he's going to go into that in, in um, detail. Um, but basically, it's a sequence of numbers. And um, uh, it's, it actually represents a very large number uh, that's been compressed in a, different, a number of different ways. Um, the, uh, and they, they all use math in interesting ways. So, um, so 91 is two numbers that multiply by each other. What are they? What are, what are those two numbers? 91. 7 and 13, good. But it's a hard problem, right? It's a lot easier to, to multiply 7 times 13. Okay? That's an example of how this technology works. That basically, we are dealing with the fact that some problems in one direction are very easy and in the other direction are very hard. So the, the SSL, the, the uh, protocol that, um, that I co-authored, uh, largely uses RSA, which uses that problem. Except instead of 7 and 13, it's this giant long number. Okay. Um, in some cases, it's what, 496 bits, so that's... Uh, uh, 512 characters of number, and that's compressed. So if you did it as, as decimal, it's probably you know a uh, thousand. I mean, it's once again a number that's larger than the number of atoms in the universe. Okay, um, and then multiplying it by another number. So in um, these technologies, what we have is we split things. So the seven you can kind of consider to be the private key, and the the uh, uh, well, actually the, the the seven and the thirteen are parts of the private key. That multiple at the end, the the uh, ninety one, is your public key. And so you can basically give somebody um, uh, the the public key in some fashion and. So as long as you're the only one who can do that math and prove that these two numbers are real, things are going to happen. Now, we don't use RSA uh, very much. Is there anything RSA left in? Nope. Yeah. So I became CTO of Certicom in 98. Uh, and basically, Certicom's big claim to fame was they came up with a new way, a new crypto system. Um, it's called elliptic curve. And it's, been, it's basically the same idea. You know, how many people have done a graph where you've seen, you know, Different types of you know math done on a uh, on a x y and you get a some kind of curve on the page. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, ECC is just this weird kind of uh, S C shaped curve, and it has these two these two bumps in it, and they cross. There's you know you can draw lines through a number of those places and they'll cross in two different points because it's a C curve, right? You know, it goes um, so. To figure out the, you know, where those two points are, if you only have one of them, is a very, very hard problem. So it's the same exact thing. It just happens to be more amenable to uh, floating point math. So we can do things with, um, uh, you know, NVIDIA chips or floating point processors in, in modern processors or whatever to make it very, very, very fast. And so most of the time, that's what we use, and that's what elliptic curve uses. But those are keys. And uh, you know, basically, you keep the private one private. You lock it away in a wide variety of ways. Maybe you, you know, take it completely off of your computer. I'm sure that there are. I mean, I do know that there are people who basically take their laptop, buy a bunch of Bitcoin, unplug their laptop, and they put the laptop in storage. So, um, uh, so there's just no way that anything can happen to it. Um, Any other questions? What's the problem that you solved last month? Is it sure. So, how many people have bought a, um, a certi an SSL certificate? Okay. Quite a few people. So, um, uh, was it fun? Was it easy? Okay. Uh, so, it's a pain in the ass. Have you ever had to revoke an SSL certificate? Heartlead. Heartlead, exactly. And that's the big... You haven't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> That's exactly. So what happened was Heartbleed was not a flaw in SSL. It was a flaw in a specific implementation that was so cheap that 60% of the internet used it, but it was so cheap that it only supported one person quarter time to maintain it. So talk about a tragedy of the commons, okay? Billion dollar companies relying on something that they're paying absolutely nothing for and don't even care to put a few thousandths of a percent of a percent <laughs> into supporting it. So serious bug basically meant a compromise of potentially all your keys. Uh, that meant that all your certificates needed to be reissued. Well, lo and behold, this promise that you, you've paid $500 for the certificate or $200 or whatever it was, uh, one of their promises is, oh, well, if anything goes wrong, let us know and we'll revoke it and then nobody will use it. Well, it doesn't work. Okay. Microsoft. How many people use, here use a Microsoft browser? Pretty much everybody who's got a PC, probably. Um, they don't report if there's a problem. They got, because when, what, when Mozilla tested a couple years ago, half of the uh, CAs didn't even respond with an answer to whether or not a certificate was revoked. And then when Heartbleed happened, there were just so, so many people um, that had problems. So what, we're, what I've come up with was a really simple trick, and we'll talk about it maybe on tomorrow, uh, if there's time. Um, to basically use the blockchain for replication. So I'm splitting certification. So what you, when you're buying so a certificate, you're, what you're buying is certification services and you're buying that someday they will revoke it for you if you ask them to. And they failed on that. So I'm basically splitting it off and I'm not allowing you to revoke anything. You can revoke a certificate. You can revoke, revoke an SSH key. You can revoke a cash register. You can say, cash register, I don't want you to talk to me anymore, because <coughs> I don't trust you. I can revoke, you know, um, my insurance, because I don't trust anymore. Why should I pay for insurance anymore? So I think it's a powerful concept. Turning things off. Is it common that people discard their keys every time they make a transaction? It is the best practice. But is it common? Yes. If you are using, if okay, I'd have you throwing away your keys. So pretty much, if you're a serious developer, if you're any one of the exchanges, anybody who's doing a serious wallet implementation or whatever, you are throwing away the keys. Yes. Now there are some tricks that, that, that people do. There's something called a what is the the the, the key tree? Bit thirty two. Bit thirty two. Yeah. So there's this particular technique where you basically can do one math operation gives you a bunch of keys. So they basically throw away one of the keys, but it kind of has another one that's a next to it. They move it to the one next to it, just for convenience, so that you're not having to keep track of too many things. Um, and uh, but yeah, you're. It's, you're it's security implications rather than just privacy because you you're it, announcing the public address. Yeah, it's two, it's two things. So those addresses that are out there are not public keys. And he'll talk about it later. But they're not public keys. They're hash of the public key. But in order to get paid, you have to, put, you, have to give, you have to reveal your public key. And as soon as you reveal your public key, that means that there's a limited opportunity, just like I said, if you're always doing it with your right hand, but the attacker knows this. Well, there's a limited possibility that you know, if you use that public key again, you know, somebody now has had a year since the last time it was used to try to find out where, what it was, how it was used, you know, you know, put a virus on your machine, all this kind of stuff. But if you throw away the key, it doesn't matter. It's gone now. So, so what they suborn your laptop your, or your other machine, it's gone. So, is there a number of the non-financial transactions because of the blockchain financial transactions. Yeah. Can you repeat the question? So uh, the question is, is there a way to find out the number of non-financial transactions and such? So um, it depends on exactly what you mean. So, uh, but there is something called uh, op return, which is a, uh, basically the ability to put a little note in the blockchain as well. So it's basically, 
It's a zero to a zero, you know, and a little note. And it's very little, okay? Originally it was 40 characters, now it's 80, 80 on some. Is everybody using it now? I heard there were still some people who don't. Um, that's a complicated question. Okay. <laughs> Any case, you can put a note in. So there's various ways that people have been, you know, putting things into that 40 characters um, that can then refer to things that are much bigger elsewhere. Okay, and so that's the, basically the trick that everybody's been taking advantage to do a lot of these other things. And we're definitely a very important part of, of doing things um, with the Bitcoin blockchain for our purposes, because we're not only here for money, we're blockchain you, not Bitcoin you. Okay? With blockchain, you do all these other different types of things. That op return, that those 40 or 80 bytes are really, really important. And you know, there are other people who basically come up with other consensus mechanisms, other ways of doing this, uh, doing the blockchain have said, we think this is really, really important, and they're giving you a lot more information that you can put in there than, than any bytes. So uh, we can, I can tell you how many there are on the blockchain. Uh, in fact, there's a, I think if you, if you go to coinsecrets.org, you can actually see every secret that's been, uh, everything that's been put into an op return. And um, uh, I'm sure they, know how many have been put into the blockchain, but there are other blockchains. And um, you know, it's quite possible, for instance, when Ethereum launches, that you know, people won't be putting stuff into the main blockchain anymore. Should we take 10 minutes? Yeah. Bathrooms are... Bathrooms are... Bathrooms, so when you walked in,